Viewers at home, you are welcome to my presentation on, on capital asset pricing model. In this presentation, I will examine capital asset pricing model. I will define the various uh, variables using the formula for calculating the cap uh, cost of equity using the capital asset pricing model. I will explain the type of risk, which include the systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Please, if this is your first time of coming across my channel, or if you have not subscribed previously, please click on the red subscribe button. And besides it, you will see a notification bell icon. Please go ahead to click it so that you'll be notified each time I drop a new video. If you are a returning subscriber, I want to say thank you and God bless you. Capital Asset Pricing Model Capital Asset Pricing Model is another method of estimating the cost of equity. I've considered the cost of equity under Dividend Valuation Model and Gordon Growth Model. So, I want to consider the Capital Asset Pricing Model. I've told you that it's another method of estimating the cost of equity. Capital Asset Pricing Model establishes the relationship between investment risk and expected return from the individual securities. It establishes the relationship between investment risk and expected return from individual securities. So, there are two types of risk we are going to consider. There are two types of risk which shall be considered in this lecture. Number one is systematic risk, and the second one is unsystematic risk. I want to start with unsystematic risk. Unsystematic risk is a risk that is unique to individual investments. A risk that is unique to individual investment or securities that can be eliminated through diversification. A risk that is unique to individual investments or securities that can be eliminated through diversification. That means the unsystematic risk can be eliminated through diversification. Unsystematic risk can be eliminated through diversification. The second one is systematic risk. Systematic risk can also be called market risk. You either call it systematic risk or you call it market risk. Systematic risk is a risk that cannot be diversified away. Risk that, that cannot be diversified away is said to be a systematic risk. It cannot be diversified. It cannot be eliminated through diversification. A risk that cannot be diversified away because it is the risk that affects the market as a whole. Systematic risk is a risk that affects the market as a whole. That is why it cannot be diversified. It cannot be eliminated through diversifications. It's a risk that affects the market as a whole and all investments in the market in the same way. Risk that cannot be diversified away that affects all investments in the market in the same way. That is systematic risk. Now, I want to consider the capital asset pricing formula. The formula for calculating the cost of equity using capital asset pricing model. The formula is we have cost of equity can be obtained, obtained using two variables. Return risk-free return. So it's risk-free return plus risk premium. Risk premium. That is the formula. Risk-free return plus risk premium. So, now, your risk-free rate, RF, and the risk premium is beta 
into RM minus RF. That is risk premium. This is risk premium. Beta into RM minus RF. That is risk premium. We are KE. We are KE equal to cost of equity. Cost of equity. The RF is risk free rate. Risk free rate. Then we have RM. That is average return on the market. Average return on the market. Then we have beta. Beta, this is beta factor. Beta factor. The measurement of systematic risk. Beta measure the systematic risk of the project. Then RM minus RF. RM minus RF. That is equity risk premium. Equity risk premium equity risk premium or or average market risk average market risk equity risk premium or average market risk they haven't defined the variables so I want to lay more emphasis on some of the key variables the first one i'm going to look at is the risk free rate risk free rate risk free rate which is rf risk free rate of return risk free rate of return risk free rate of return RF risk free rate of return is the minimum rate required by all investors. The minimum rate required by all investors for an investment whose return are certain. It is the minimum minimum return. Minimum rate required required by all investors by all investors by all investors for an investment for an investment whose returns are certain whose Return are certain. The minimum rate required by all investors for an investment whose return are certain is said to be the risk free rate of return. Risk free rate of return. It may be given as in your examination question, your risk free rate may be given as it may be given as it may either be given the risk free rate as the return on treasury bills. The return on treasury bills. Or you may be given as uh, the return on government gifts, the return on government gifts. So that is the risk free rate of returns. The second one I'm going to consider is beta. 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 I've told you that beta measures systematic risk. It measures 
it may us systematic systematic risk systematic risk of the investment or of the project that is better so having explained all those variables or the important ones I want to take questions as work example so I'm going to solve question as work example so example one this question is obtained this question is obtained from I can study test by Emily Wolf Emily Wolf International question one is obtained from I can study test by Emily Wolf International so because the risk free rate of return is 4%. The risk free rate of return is 4%. That means our RF is 4%. RF is 4%. And the return on the market portfolio is 8.5%. That is market return. That is RM, which is 8.5%. What is the expected return from the shares? From shares in companies X and Y, if A, the beta factor for company X shares is 1.25. This is beta factor for company X. So, solution. Solution. You have been given the risk free rate. Solution. The risk free rate, RF, is given to be. 4%, 4%. So if our RF is 4%, and the market return, RM, is given to be 8.5%. The market return is 8.5%. We were told that the return on the market portfolio is 8.5%. That is our RM. RM is 8.5%. RM 8.5%. What is the expected return? What is the expected return from shares in companies X and Y if the beta factor for company X is 1.25? The beta factors for company X is given to be 1.25. So then in the A, the beta, the beta factor is 1.25. Now, what is the expected return from shares? That is cost of equity. So we say cost of equity equal to RF plus beta into RM minus RF. Our RF is the risk free rate, which is 4%. The beta is given to be 1.25 into RM, which is market return 8.5, minus RF, which is 4. Then, you subtract. This will be 4 plus 1.25 into 8.5 minus 4. That will be 4.5. 4.5 times 1.25. 1.25 times 4.5. And that will give us 5.625. So we have 4 plus 5.625. So when you sum it up, you have 9.625%. Therefore, the cost of equity is 9.625%. That is solution to A. Solution to A. Then the B. In the B aspect of the question, the beta factor for company Y is 0.9. You are given the beta factor for company Y to be 0.9. So if the beta is 0.9 and other parameters are the same, our beta is 0.90 and other parameters are the same. So cost of equity remain RF plus the beta into RM minus RF. Our RF remain 4%, the beta is 
RM remains 8.5 and the respiratory rate is 4. So which is 4 plus 4 plus uh, 0 0.90 multiplied by the when you subtract this, you have 4.5. 4.5 times 0 0.9, that gives us 4.05. 4 point, we have 4 plus 4.05. When you sum it up, you have 8.05%. That is the cost of equity. That is the solution to example one. So I want to look at another work example, example two. So you were told, you were given example two, the most recent statement of financial position. The most uh, recent statement of financial position of physical limiters is as shown below. You are given the ordinary shares, ordinary shares of 50 cents each, and that is $20,000. Then we have reserves, and that is $32,500. Then we have total equity to be 52,500. Then we have 10% debenture, and that is 15,000. Total equity and liabilities, then we have 67,500. So, the better, you were told, the better of equity of physical limiters is 0 0.82. Return on government security is currently 12%, while the return on the market is 17%. The ordinary shares are currently quoted at $2.17 per share, while the market value of debenture is $87.50 per cent as interest required. Determine the appropriate weighted average cost of capital. Work assuming the rate of company tax is 30%. I've told you that to compute your work, your work is the weight is the weighted average cost of capital, and I've told you that your weighted average com cost of capital is just a composite cost of capital. Now, to determine the weighted average cost of capital, number one, you will need to determine the cost of equity since there are two components of capital there. Yeah? You have the equity, that is ordinary shares. Then we also have the debenture, 10% debenture. Those are the components, those are the capital of that organization, of physical. So, since we are given capital, the comp uh, two capital of physical, then you will need to determine the cost of ordinary shares at the same time, cost of debentures. Now, since we are given the better, you are given the better of equity of physical to be 0 0.82. You are given a uh, return on government securities currently 12%, while the return of the market is 17%. That means to determine or to estimate the cost of equity, then you are going to apply the capital asset pricing model. So cost of equity, you apply capital asset pricing model. And I've told you that cost of equity using capital asset pricing model is risk free rate plus beta into RM minus RF. The RF is given in the question. You are given the risk free rate. You were told that the return on government securities, the return on government securities is currently 12%. That is the risk free rate. Risk free rate is 12%. The beta is equally given. The beta of equity of ASICAN Limited is 0 0.82. The beta of equity is 0 0.82. 0 0.82. And the market returns. Return on the market is equally given. Why the market value of, uh, I mean, why the return on the market is 17%. Why the return on the market is 17%? So market return is 17%. So if market return is 17%, so using the above formula, our RF 
is 12 percent plus beta which is 0 0.82 into rm which is sorry our rm is 17 percent rm is 17 percent what is 17 percent why the return of the market is 17 percent rm is 17 percent so we have 17 percent minus rf our rf is 12 percent risk free rate so which is 12 plus 0 0.82 multiplied by 17 minus 12 that will be 5. 17 minus 12 that will be 5. 5 times 0 0.82 0 0.82 times 5 that will give us 4.1 4.1 plus 12 that will be 16.1 percent therefore the cost of equity is 15.1 percent uh, 16.1 we've obtained the cost of equity then we want to obtain the cost of debenture cost of debenture since debenture is is the second form of capital of Azikan Limited. So 10% debentures, which is 15,000. And you were told that the that ordinary the ordinary shares are currently quoted at this. This is the market value per share of ordinary share. Why the market value of debenture is 89.50 percent ex interest. So the market value of debenture is 89 then if you look at the debenture the interest rate the interest rate is is 10 percent so this debenture we want to assume it is an irredeemable debenture see i've told you that the cost of an irredeemable debenture i said the formula is interest into one minus tax rate over market value of debenture x interest multiplied by one 100 over 1. So, since you are given the tax rate, but where there are no tax, then you have I over market value times 100. That is the formula for calculating the cost of an irredeemable debenture. Interest rate is given to be 10%. The market value, you have been told that the market value is 89.5. 89 X interest. That is the market value of the debenture, 89.5% 89 x interest. So, and you were equally told that assume 30%, that assuming the rate of company tax is 30%, that means tax rate is 30%. So if tax rate is 30%, then let's substitute into the formula. Our tax rate, is 30 percent so substituting into the formula then the cost of the venture that will be interest which is 10 into one minus tax rate tax rate is 30 percent which is 0 0.3 over market value of the venture which is 89.5 it will be given to be s interest multiplied by 100 for better understanding please try to watch my lecture on cost of capital Cost of capital part one and part two, and the weighted average cost of capital. All these have been explained in detail. So, one minus 0 0.3 will be 0 0.7. 0 0.7 times 10, then we have 7. 7 divided by 89.5. So that gives us 0 0.0782 and so on. Multiply by 100. So the cost of the venture, cost of the venture is approximately equal to 7.8 percent now that you have obtained the cost of equity and the cost of the venture then you cannot obtain obtain the weighted average cost of capital i've told you that to obtain the work weighted average cost of capital you have a column for capital structure capital structure which comprises equity equity and the venture the market value you determine the market value now let's determine the market value of 
equity and the market value of the debenture. Now, go by the question. What is your equity? How many equity shares do you have? The ordinary shares is 20,000. Ordinary shares of 50 cent is 20,000. Ordinary share of 50 cent each, which is 20,000. Then that will amount to how many shares? Then the number of shares will be number of shares will be 20,000 divided by the 50 cent, which is par value, divided by 0.5. And that will give us 40,000 shares. If you are not having 40,000 shares and you are given the market value per ordinary share, the market value, you were told that the ordinary shares are currently quoted at 2.17 per share. So the market value of ordinary share now, market value, value of ordinary share. And that will be 2.17 times 40,000 shares. And that will give us, we have 40,000 times 2.17. And that will give us $86,800. $86,800. That is the market value of ordinary share. Then you can put that under the market value. $86,800. Then what is the market value of the venture? That of the venture will be the venture. The market value of the venture. You are having 15000 the venture. 15,000 debenture as given in the question. 10% debenture, and that is 15,000. Then you are given the market value of debenture. The market value of debenture. You were told why the market value of debenture is 89.50 per cent. 80 per cent. So the market value of debenture, 89.50 percent times the debenture is 15,000 and that will give us 89 debenture is only denominated into 100 divided by 100 times 15,000 and that will give us 13,425 dollar 13,425 dollar then that is the market value of the venture 13,425. Then we now put cost of capital. Cost of capital. Cost of capital. The cost of the venture as calculated is 7.8 percent. You can put that as the cost of the venture 7.8 percent. What the cost of ordinary share as obtained from the capital asset pricing is 16.1 percent 16.1 percent so we have 16.1 percent that is the cost of capital then the next column is hash total hash total to obtain the hash total we have 16.1 percent of 86,800 and 7.8 percent of 13,425 now let calculate that. Then for the venture is 1047.15. That of ordinary share, 16.1% of uh, 86,800. Then we have 13,974.8. Thirteen now, to calculate the work, let's sum up the hash total column. Let's sum up this column. 13,974.8 plus 1047 plus 1047.15. The total of the hash total column is 15,000. 
15,021.95. Then you also sum up the market value column. The market value is totaled. It is 6,800 plus 13,425. Then you have the total of 100,225. Then the next thing is to calculate the work, the weighted average cost of capital. And the weighted average cost of capital, you have the hash total, what you have under the hash total, which is 15,021.95 over the total of the market value. And the market value is 100,000. Two two five multiply by hundred. So fifteen thousand and twenty one point nine five divided by one hundred thousand two two five times hundred. Therefore, you have the work, the weighted average cost of capital equals to fourteen. Let's say fifteen point zero percent, fourteen point nine eight eight percent. Therefore, work is approximately equal to fifteen point zero percent. Please, if you have not subscribed previously, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.